Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's discussion on the celestial sphere, we are going to talk about the celestial equator and what that looks like in the sky. So what is the celestial equator? Well, much like the celestial sphere, it is the projection, in this case of Earth's equator out onto the sky. So if you imagine Earth's equator here being stretched out as far as it could possibly go, where it intersects the sky would be the celestial equator. And just like the Earth's equator, this divides the sky into a northern and southern hemisphere. So the North Pole would be in the northern hemisphere. Then you'd have the equator halfway in between, halfway through as you move along the celestial sphere. And then at the other end, you'd have the south celestial pole. So just as the Earth's equator divides Earth into two parts, the celestial equator divides the sphere of the stars into two parts. So how do we use this? Well, it's actually a reference line for the measurement of the coordinate of declination. Now, what is the declination? Well, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in another lecture. But declination is essentially the measurement of the star's position, how far it is, that angular distance, either north or south of the celestial equator. So it's very similar to latitude here on Earth. Latitude measures how far an, a location is north or south of Earth's equator. Declination will then do the same for the sky and will measure how far stars are either north or south of the celestial equator on the sky. Now it also is the location of the sun on the two equinoxes. So on the two days, a uh, two days with equal day and equal night, and those we call the equinoxes, that is when the sun would be on the celestial equator. So here we can see that. And those two points where things intersect. So here's where the ecliptic, which is the path of the sun, intersects the celestial equator. That is the spring equinox is when it's going up. And the fall equinox would be when it is going down. So we'll intersect that exactly two times. Now, what is located at the equator? Well, as with other, as with the poles, there is really nothing located at the equator. So there's not going to be anything specifically visible there. There certainly are stars and constellations which happen to pass through the equator, but not necessarily anything directly on it. So let's take a look at that. And we can see an image here. Now here we're looking as we looked at for the uh, celestial poles, we look directly at them and we can see one of the celestial poles off to the right hand side here. But in reality, what we're seeing is in this case, the uh, the celestial equator and you can kind of make out roughly where it is by studying the image. The farther you get away from the pole, notice how the lines become straighter and straighter. And when you get to one point in here, there'll be a point somewhere in here where the lines are going pretty much straight up and down. That would be the location of the celestial equator in the sky. Now, it, it's not a point like the poles. The poles are a single point. The celestial equator is a line that stretches all the way around the sky. Now, again, there's nothing specifically located there, although there are stars and constellations which go through it. And we can see an example of one of those here on a star chart. If we take a look at that, we can actually see the celestial equator here marked. And that goes directly through the middle of the constellation of Orion in this case. So there are constellations that will be split. Orion is part in the northern hemisphere and part in the southern. So we do have some objects that will be near or on the celestial equator, but there is nothing specifically that will always identify it in the sky. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary. And what we look at here is the celestial equator, and it is the projection of Earth's equator onto the celestial sphere. It divides the sky into two hemispheres. And the celestial sphere will pass through many different constellations and there will be many stars close to it at any given time. 
but there is nothing specifically in the sky that will highlight it and tell us exactly where it is. So that concludes this discussion on the celestial equator. We'll be back again next week to talk about another part of the celestial sphere. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.